Thank you very much, audience, that you are here, even though, as Wolfgang already said, you are exhausted after so many presentations. So I'll try to be not boring, telling you the truth <laughs> about our exploration. So uh, I want to represent you the small project of exploring the very small cave but the, by the very small team that started just around the Black Sea, as you see, in small country of Abkhazia, which is formerly was part of Georgia and just next to the border with Russia. Russian Federation. This is the border. This is the Abkhazian Republic, which is now proclaimed the, itself independent. So uh, why it is so important for the cavers, at least in Russia or in the former Soviet Union, this region of uh, Abkhazia? Because it has two big limestone massives here and here. This one is Arabica Massive, which is uh, roughly 2,000 plus uh, meters above the sea level. And this one, the second one, is Bzib Range, which is also roughly the same elevation and has very good opportunity to become the capital of the deepest caves in the world. So what happened with this area that it made it so special. Uh, there are many arguments and many theories about it, but still, what we have, we have very thick layer of the limestone here. It's mostly Jurassic limestone. And uh, when the big Caucasus was formed, it was elevated. The theory of Professor Alexander Klimchuk said that by that time, when the Caucasus started to, be, to elevate, many caves, I mean horizontal passages, many galleries, already been formed, probably in Pleistocene era or even before. For example, his opinion that it was even 5.6 million years ago, when it was the Messina crisis of salinity and the level of Black Sea, which wasn't Black Sea at the moment, been probably even 600 meters below the level we have today. So if you see here, this is the Gagra Gulf. The Gagra Gulf has the depths of roughly 400 meters, and almost at the very bottom of it, there is the fresh water source, which gives us the hydrological system of the caves in the region more than uh, 2,700 meters. And at least the connection with this springs on the shore was, appro was approved with the experiment. So w the theory says us that probably these caves that we have at the very bottom of the Gagri uh, Gulf already been formed way before the Caucasus start to grow. And it start to grow like ledges, forming the ledges made of different blocks of limestone. So the water that come to the cave and goes down, follow the cracks until it uh, stops. It find the big gallery which was formed before. Follow to the next block and goes down again. So the speciality of this massive that all the water that drops at the top of the mountain, very quick, goes 
down to the depths, which was confirmed with our a bit unlucky experience, but it's a bit later. Okay, so a Virovkina cave. It is situated between two big mount, uh, two mountains. This is a mountain zone, and where I am now, <laughs> supposed to be the Mount Krepest, which is the castle in Russia. And the entrance is over here. When we are digging the digging the cave in the winter, the Snow is like five meters, seven meters thick sometimes, so we have to dig it very, as you see, the entrance is here. Okay, so uh, why this name, Verovkina? Verovkina is named after the speleologist and the diver, Alexander Verovkin, who died in the Samp in 1983, and uh, his brother, participated the discovery and exploration of the cave. And in 1986, when the cave came to the depths of 420, they named it after him. It first discovered in 1968, so more than 50 years ago, but it was only 115 meters, very small cave, just a couple of pits, nothing special, so it was forgotten for some 20 years, and in 1983, it was rediscovered by our Spillo Club, Pirova Kevin Club, and uh, it was in four expedition, came to the depths of 440 meters, and then stopped, because it is very, very narrow meander, or the passage, very narrow, and you cannot go there, especially with the techniques that they used in 1986. So for later on, in 1991, if you don't know it, if you know it or not, uh, there was the war in Abkhazia, between Abkhazia and Georgia for independence, and nobody could come to discover or to explore this cave. So for almost like 15 years, there was no exploration. So in 2000, Pirovo Kevin Club and us, we came for our first expedition to this particular cave. And it was, as I told you, like very insignificant, only 400, 440 meters. It's like nothing comparing to the uh, other caves. But still, we have some interest to this cave and spent like many expeditions. If you see, it's very narrow and we discovered many dead-end passages, at least seven of them, even until 2009, which map we have here. You see, one, two, three, four, five, six. It's all dead-end passages that never never gave us any success. But in, so later on we had other expedition to other deep caves all over the world, but still, time to time, we get back to this particular cave. And in 2015, the boys from our club, young boys, not our team, they kept on pushing some of the passage passages in this cave, and they uh, came to some like more spacey place, and it was like, it, it looked like the head of some uh, pit. And they told us, and the next June, we came there, very small team, like six of us, just to check what's happened, what is this place. First 400 meters by this branch was, as you see, very, very narrow. Just to mention, this is the passage this person can enter, even with two bags, etc. So, but uh, you can see how narrow is it. And this June, June of 2016, we came to the depths of 630 meters. And this is this like the race to the depths began. In this particular expedition, 
the second uh, pit from the one our friends stopped. It was the deepest uh, pit in the entire system for the moment. It's 155 meters deep. So you can imagine it's very, very spacey and very deep pit. And you can throw the rock and it will just fly very, very long time. So every other expedition, we added some 400 meters plus to the depths of the cave. It was like, for me, it was something un unbelievable. In August, we added another. So we crossed the line of one kilometer deep. Next October, this, this October, we added another. 350 meters. Then we became, we came into the club of the third deepest cave. Like we became the third deepest cave, and it was already time for us to think, where are we? <laughs> so, and this particular expedition, one of our guys sitting in the underground camp minus 1,000, made just for doing nothing. And he made some footage of the insects and uh, other invertebrates that live around this camp. These tiny creatures, Columbalas, floating on the surface, as you see. And later on, we show this, uh, we show this footage in the news. And I commented that probably we will invite some biologists. And, uh, but I mentioned that it probably will my friend from Portugal. And later on, I get the Angry, angry message from Russian biologists, and they told me that we have biology in Russia too, so you have to, you have to work with us. So from this particular moment, we start our science program, at least from the biology point of view. So every single expedition, we take the samples, new species, new examples for our biologists. Uh, in August 2017, we crossed uh, the world record for the dry system because the previous uh, deepest cave was Krubira Varonia and they had minus 2,199, but it was already with the dive of 45 meters, so it was already the record for the dry part of the cave. And the young guys from our team made it, but we came the second part and we found more deep system and it gave us the world record of 2,204 meters. Uh, and what is particularly interested in this uh, discovery, it was that beneath of the 2,000 meters exists the very huge labyrinth system of the big passages like this size or even bigger that you see on the picture. And it was, it gave us, when we processed the topography, it gave us like more than seven kilometers of passages just in the bottom part, which was amazing for us. So we celebrated it at first and start to collect the animals from this part, start to do in photography. This was a very thrilling expedition for us. And in March the same year, we came and measured the final lake, which is the captain's, the last harbor of Captain Nema, Siphon, and the guy with the line and the stone on it, just measure it over that 
just be beneath this wall, and it gives us another eight meters. So now the depth of the cave officially is 2,212, which is luckily and very funny that it is four times less than the height of uh, Jumalungma or the Everest. So 8848-2212. This is the topography of the cave. This is two final sumps. They are pretty much at the same level. And this is the problem of the cave, that with all this vertical passage, we come to one system which is connected with the very small, of course it's not small, small, but it's comparatively small passage, and it's the only one passage, to the very big and very spacey, but separate labyrinth system. What's going next? That we went to the June just to rig some, to change some rope, to improve the rigging, and to collect the biology test. But the September 2018, we came to make a photographs for the National Geographic with Robbie, his friend Jeff, and uh, we enjoyed pretty much the weather because it was good, but it was the very last day of good weather when we, we finally get down to the cave and we spent there 10 days. You can see a bit of about how spacey the bottom part is and how beautiful is it with the photographs of Robbie. But later on, the rain came and they repeated for almost one week. Not very strong, but it soaked all the soil, all the hollows in the ground. So, like for, for the big flood, the, everything was ready. So later on, all these spaces, including our campsite, which is at 2,100, was flooded completely. The water raised for 130 meters. It gives us probably five minutes to get everything ready and to sneak away of the flooding camp site. We've been lucky to survive by that time. Eight person of us, but we understood how fast is the flood because we couldn't believe that all these spaces could be flooded with uh, such a big speed. Because, but, but it gives, gives us information as well, how fast is the water running down? Because two of us, our friends, they've been in the, the, the camp 1,350. And they reported us that the flood pulse came. And flood, flood pulse, if you imagine, it's the like train coming to the tunnel with the roaring. And it's if you saw it one time, you will not never forget it. So it came to this camp, and half an hour. Later, it was already at our camp. So all this distance is just drops for half an hour, which is very quick for the water in the underground system. OK, so it, post, it uh, gives us a question, how to survive such a flood? We start to think, and it pushed up us to the to call the hydrogeologist because only hydrogeologist can solve the problem how the water goes from the main system or from underground river or from the siphon where the water comes up first when it comes up later because later on in 3 days 
we try to save our equipment that been over here. The flood already come down, and we try to pass this passage to get the equipment. But all this passage, you see, this, de this depression, it was full of water, even though it was already three days after the flood. So, in the next expedition, we found hydrogeologists from the Spain, from Instituto Geologico Minero Español, which is in Madrid, and they made a special project for our cave, gave us the loggers to install it in the sumps in the cave. Probably the next year we will install it in the other places around the cave, just to start to study hydro, hydro system of the cave. You see my friend Costa, he is installing this logger. It's for, the, for three years. It will, it will work for three years inside the cave. Every year, every expedition, we can withdraw the data from this logger. It's like every half an hour, it measures the level of the water, temperature, and uh, uh, salinity of the water. So, what we expect from this study? We, start, we expect to understand where finally, how fast, in what direction, and finally, where to the water from the hydro system of our cave goes. Because for the Krubera, they already had the dying of the water. They put fluorescent in the water, and it comes out. You see the long arrows here, it shows some springs in the shore where the water goes. But suddenly we had uh, some uh, backup from our, some support from our biologists. We didn't expect it, but later on they showed us some hydro connection because of the fauna of Virovkina. So totally in our studies, we already gave them 15 different species of invertebrates. Some of them, they are completely new species. So this is the map with the, where the foundings were. And what happened? The creatures that, are, that live in, inside of the water not the, uh, they, they are live only in the water system, so they cannot go the dry way to another cave or to another entrance. So it is, the, it is proof that our cave, the Ryovkina cave, for example, because the same species of the lychee, stiglobiotic lychee, the same that we have in the deepest part of Virovkina. It was found in the Blue Lake Car Spring, which is like 10 kilometers southeast from Virovkina. So it already gives, um, gives us, us some idea how spacey, how big the hydro system of the cave. And another finding the shrimp which lives in, in the deepest lake of Virovkina Cave, was found in Gekska Cave, which is seven kilometers to the northeast. So it gives us already triangle of the same hydro, hydrological system, even though we didn't start the hydro project itself. And another creature, which is amphipod, Stigobiotic amphipod gives us connection to Repro River and the Troika Cave and the same Gekskai Cave. So we have already big space that connected hydro, uh, uh, by water. 
The other, as soon as most of you are science people here, uh, we start another science project, which is the paleoclimatology. Our friend and the professor of the Innsbruck University, Gina Mosley, she is doing the paleoclimatology studies here, and we brought her this stalagmite from Virovkina cave, and not only. These two fellows we brought in last year. It was already studied in the United States for dating. And as you see, the dates of starting of the growth of this paleotherm, the finish of the growth, gives us roughly these numbers. So if we even minus some probable mistakes, it will give us at least 650,000 years when the speleotherm start to grow. It means all the system, I mean all the tunnel, the cave itself, already been ready for this growth. So already existed. So it gives us another information about how old is the... And even though this tunnel, this passage, it's only 600 meters deep, so we don't, don't have any idea yet about the bottom part. For the bottom part, this, this one was taken. It is from 2,100 meters deep. And this one, another one, to be sure, for 600, from, the, from the 600 meters. And this probably is more important from, for climate paleoclimatology study because it's closer to the surface. We'll see what it gives us because this one and this one, we only brought it a uh, couple of days bef uh, ago and only yesterday it was cut out and samples been taken to study it in the United States. So I also have to mention that we start microbiology project, this expedition. We don't have any photos of it because it's like boring. We are just taking samples from the walls and everybody, everywhere, every hundred meters of deep. Uh, and it will be processed in the uh, United States as well. And we'll see what probably interesting information it will give us later on. But still, we hope some new discoveries, some new thrilling information about the cave, about the past of our planet, and probably some new foundings, some new passage for us, like the cavers, because we are just more like to discover new passages, and for science, only to bring something new, some samples and everything. So I hope probably somebody of this audience will have any ideas and probably some brave projects that you will try to complete in our cave as well. You easily find me on a Facebook or whatever, or uh, organizers will provide you with my email address. So we are happy to see new science projects in our cave because now, at the moment, for us it's very interesting. We are really appreciate any help from the science. <laughs>